Aaron from Automate All Things back with another stream clip. Wanted to give you some context before you jump in. So on this stream, we're helping Lisa, who's an aerial survey marketplace company owner, which means that she connects buyers and sellers for aerial equipment survey, and she manages her CRM out of Airtable. And one thing that Lisa is struggling with is how to manage her contacts. So sometimes her contacts are under a, sales, a single select and she has multiple different tables for all her different contacts. So salesperson uh, is its own table or contacts is its own table for leads. And really a best practice in Airtable is to have as few tables as you can and organize like information together. So on this stream, uh, Victoria and I, Victoria, who's a CSM at Airtable, uh, is helping uh, Lisa go from that unorganized structure and get to a single place for all of her contacts and how to manage all of the different contact types. So with that, hope you enjoy this stream clip. Yeah, I thought that was good. No, I'm not gonna ask them to like and subscribe. You do that at the end of the video. And if, if they like it, they're just gonna like and subscribe anyway. Okay, yeah, let's just go with, this one was good. All right, enjoy. really interesting. So Lisa started, I think, with this concept that every single contact should be its separate table. And Victoria, tell me why that is not the right way to build the base. Yeah. Um, I, if you've watched the stream before, but if you're new, uh, <laughs> this is this this is great information. Um, I'm a huge proponent of having a people table uh, because what we're talking about is different what we're trying to assess out here is what are the different objects or pieces that we're tracking um, and what are the characteristics of, of that object. And if things have similar characteristics, but there might be one other feature that defines them as different, that's when we want to put them in the same table. So people are a great um, example of this. And we find this in a lot of places where you'll have one for client, you'll have one for internal contact, you might have one for vendor. Um, really what you want is a table full of people because all, all people have a first name, a last name, a phone number, an email address, um, an address or anything like that, where you have contact information where you might want to contact them. So there's no sense in having three different tables that all have address fields that have phone number fields or something like that. Instead, what would be more, um, more applicable here is to um, define what type of contact that person is. So right. then you can create a new field that says, well, this is a sales rep and this is a prospective buyer. Um, and as Aaron said, that person might be filling two roles. You can still, um, you know, tag them as such if it needs to be a multi-select versus a single right. select. Okay. So what I'm hearing from you is that you would, you're a proponent of sales rep is a contact. Um, and I think the natural thing is like, okay, well, what happens if my sales rep has, you know, a commission and my contact doesn't, what do I do in that situation? Right. So let's give, for example, like, let's do what you just said. Right. So I go, uh, insert left and I do, you know, type, and then I have, you know, a single select. And then I say, okay, well, this person is, you know, a, a contact, mm -hmm. right? So potentially like a buyer or a seller, and then I have a sales rep. And yeah. let's say, you know, I have switched careers. And I have uh, found a great niche outside of no code automation, uh, which is selling aerial equipment. Who would yeah. have thought? Right. <laughs> um, and I have a commission. Right. And I, I am very, I guess if you're good, do you get a high commission? I guess so. Right. I get, I get 20, 30 percent, 40 percent. I, I'm, I'm showing everyone how little I know about this. 40%. <laughs> Uh, 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 40%. There we go. Okay. But what, like, but everyone else doesn't have one. How do you differ? How do you think about this? Cause I think this is very intimidating to people yeah. of like, well, how do I think right. about that? So what makes sense for a, a sales rep to have a commission, but not a buyer. Right. And so what you could do is one, you know, there are some views where it's like the contact view or a view where like everything is the same across. So right. 
Um, so I kind of like just jumped into a concept, whereas then you want to start thinking about what views do you need to kind of differentiate like the information right. you want to see for someone. So if you just want to see contact information for everybody, you know, all those things are the same across whatever type of right, contact right. It is. And so that could be like your overview view and maybe you group it by type. But if you right, wanted right. a more detailed salesperson view, or if you wanted to see more details about a salesperson, I would say make a sales rep view and then have right, to right. Be very specific to that sales rep. But if there's a lot of overlap between two objects, maybe there's like one commission, you know, some things you can do. Um, we use an emoji key sometimes and we have a lot of different teams working right. in one place. And so we say, you know, anything with um, this emoji is for the sales team, whereas anything with a painter emoji is for the creative team. What is a good emoji for a sales team? Money? What are, I have, I've, I'm like all stereotypes yeah, about yeah, sales. The money. Money bag. The money bag. The money bag, the flying yeah. money. Does that feel right? Uh, um, yeah, so we just added emoji. So I just used the the Apple shortcut, which is Mac Control Space. Uh, uh, uh. Control, now, control okay. Command Space. Yeah, Control Command. Yeah, there you go. And so I'm gonna filter down to where type is sales rep. Okay. Uh, and apparently they they only make ten percent, which I, you know <laughs> again tells you how much I know about sales. Uh, um, okay, so. So essentially we don't need a sales rep table because no. you know what you're going to say is like okay well if I go to sales rep there's probably a lot of information that I don't care about right like let me hide all and what I care about is is maybe you know contact name commission and then deals right so in this case leads links to deals but probably not in the way that we want Right, so when I'm thinking of the structure, right, I want to say the sales rep for this deal is this contact, and once mm -hmm. it's sold, here's their commission for that specific sale. So but I can't, yeah, I can't I, put it like here as buyer because that is what. There right, is so a lead. This is going to the contact level, which is the buyer. Mm -hmm. And then if you right. see, if you go over to the right on this table, there's a sales lead, uh, but it's a, a single select. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. So what we're saying is that we can turn this single select into a linked record. Yes. Uh, do we, uh, not the way it is right now. You would want to yeah. make it. What I love about your table and the flexibility and why people like it as like a rapid prototyping tool is um, Airtable lets you change things on the fly, but just like right. certain things have to be right. So right now we have Pat, Lyndon, Chris, and Lisa, um, but in our contacts, their names are, what are their names and contacts? It's their full names. Yeah, it's gonna create new records, right? So that's what we want right. to avoid. So, but in this case, they're all, they're all Pat. So Pat's like a pro okay. here. So yeah. let's actually put Pat as so like let's a get salesperson. Pat's real name. Uh, let's go sales rep. He gets twenty percent. He's good at what he does. He doesn't. Okay. Is it Patrick? Is it Patrick McConnell, Lisa, who's a sales rep? Because we might just be able to just change him. Oh, okay. Yep, yeah. he is. Okay, sales rep. So that the, the but the the contact here is this primary key, right? So we need to copy paste this. Exactly. So just so, so, so I did that quickly. I did that quickly. So what will happen? If we turned a single select into a linked record field, it would try to say like, okay, well, where is Pat in this table so I can associate the right deal to Pat? Our issue here is that, you know, Pat in the primary key is not Pat, it's Patrick McConnell, Clear Skies Geomatics. Now I do think an, a second issue that we're gonna run into is that little comma, if I'm not mistaken. But let's do it, let's do let's it. Let's try, let's try. Let's try. Okay, so what we're saying is like, let's turn Pat into yeah. this, right? Exactly. And now we're going to say, you know, customize field type. Let's delete these other options because they're not there. And we're saying this is now a link to our right. contacts table. And then what you can do to maybe stave off that dang. Okay, go back and un undo, just control undo? Z. Undo? Yeah, control Z. Undo. Try yeah, going sales lead uh, and, and customizing the field type back to a linked record and then clicking, um, that don't allow multiple links, like you can multiple records and see what happens. Right. Okay, right. That might interpret the comma differently. Yeah. Ooh, boom. I think we boom. Yes. It's too early for confetti, but we did it. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, so what uh, happened was, um, it's kind of trying to, you have to think like a computer and you have to think like Airtable. So um, with linked records, you can choose to link multiple records or you can only choose to link one record. Um, and as we talked last, last uh, time, it's about, um, that, that helps with junction tables. Right. Uh, one thing is if Airtable says, okay, fine, I'm not allowing multiple records in this linked record view, then you can get away with having commas in your linked records. Right. Usually right, right. when you allow multiple records, commas are your separator and um, it'll separate it into, into two, two different linked records instead of one. Um, so we just kind of thought through what a computer would do and say, okay, if I was a computer and I had this toggled off that I'd probably infer it as this. So, right. Right. Yeah. So if, if, if we had it toggled off, it would say like, okay, Benoit buyer is number one, French company is number two. Right. And it would create all of these records, splitting them at the comma level. This is what you get for coming to this stream. This like super niche <laughs> knowledge, right? This like, I know. I know how commas are interpreted differently, whether that toggle is on or off in Airtable. And I learned that on Automate All the Things. Some quality, quality information. Yeah. Four years. You deal with this for four years. You, <laughs> you, know, you know the ins and outs of this product. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. And, and it's weird because I knew it was coming, right? So we, we both probably like, we were like, oh, yeah, that comma is going to be a pain. Right, you just got this, like you feel it in your bones. What's going to happen with this base uh, when you're looking at it? Okay, so now we have sales lead, right? I think we, what we can do is like we can delete prospective buyers, we can delete sales rep. Uh, so we actually we recreated this, right? Pat McConnell, who is the you know the 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 salesperson. I love deleting tables. I gotta say, it's a good feeling. Did I tell you I had?